Hey everyone, in this video, we'll implement the surfing mechanic. So if I go stand next to the water and press Z, then I'll be able to surf in that water. Okay. So while we're surfing, the sprite of our character changes. All right. And we can also go back to the land and our character will start walking as usual. So let's look at how to implement this. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials, and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible, and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So first, let's add some water where the player can surf. So let me go to the hometown scene. All right. So I'll move the long grass towards the left side of the scene so that we have some space to create a small pond in the right side. So let me open the grid and from the tile palette, I'll select the long grass tile map and I'll use the select tool to select this long grass patch and I'll use the move tool to move it towards the left. Okay. So now we have some space to create a pond over here. So let me create a new tile map for the water. So we'll be putting it in a new tile map. So let me go ahead and add a new tile map into our grid. Okay. So I'll select 2D object and create the tile map. All right. I'll call this water. And I'll change the sorting layer to foreground so that it appears above the grass. Okay. So let's go ahead and paint some water now. So in this tile sheet, we don't have any water tiles. So we have it in the overworld tile sheet. It might take some time to open the overworld tile sheet because it has lots of tiles. Okay. So here we have the tiles for the water. But the problem is if we use these tiles, then it will look a bit weird because the grass tile surrounding the water is different. Right. So I've created a new sprite by modifying this water sprite. So let me go ahead and undo this and I'll import the new sprite. So let me import it into the graphics folder. Okay. And let's apply the pixel art settings. So I'll change sprite mode to multiple, pixel per unit to 16, filter mode to point of filter and compression to none. Okay just like we do for all our sprites. So next, we need to split this into multiple sprites. So let me go into the sprite editor and I click on slice. So each tile is going to be 16 by 16 pixels. So I'll change the type to grid by cell size and I'll set the pixel size to 16 by 16. Okay, and I'll click on slice. So now it should be split into nine different sprites okay so let me hit apply so now we can drag this into our background tile set so let me just drag it over here and we have to select a folder for the tiles to be extracted so i'll select the tiles folder all right so now we have the water tiles so let's go ahead and add a small lake over here so i'll select the center tile and I'll make sure that the active tile map is water and let me select the box tool so that we can draw it easily. All right, so I'll just draw a small lake like this and next we need to draw the border tiles. So the border tiles should not be drawn in the water tile map. We should draw it in the foreground tile map instead. The reason is because all the tiles in the water tile map is going to have collisions. So we don't want collisions for the border tiles. Okay. 
so I'll select the foreground tile map and I'll draw the border tiles okay so next let me add the border in the right all right let me also add the one in the bottom and left okay so finally let me also add the corner tiles okay so now we have a small lake in our scene so next we need to add collisions to the water tiles so that the player cannot walk through the water tiles so we can add collisions to the water tile map just like we did for the long grass tile map right so to the water tile map first i'll add a tile map collider 2d okay so now each tile will have a collider so next to make this a bit more optimized i'll also add a composite collider 2d okay so the composite collider 2d will come with a rigid body so we want this rigid body to be static since we don't want the water to move and then we want the style map collider to use the composite collider so i'll check the used by composite checkbox okay and finally i'll just change the geometry type to polygons so now we just have a single collider for all the water tiles so that's much more efficient let me just change my cursor to hand tool so that it doesn't try to paint anymore okay so next we need to add a new layer for our water so that we can use it to detect collisions so here actually we don't have to add a new layer we already have a layer called water by default so we can go ahead and use that layer okay so now when checking the collisions we'll also have to check for the water layer so in the move function of the character script here this is a function for checking collisions so right now we are checking collisions in solid layer interactive layer and player layer so we also need to add the water layer over here so first i'll go inside the game layers and i'll create a new variable for the water layer okay and let me also create a property to expose it all right so now while checking for collisions we can also add the water layer here okay so this line is too big right now so let me actually move all these layers into a variable so i'll just create a variable called collision layers and i'll assign all these layers into it okay so now we can just pass the collision layers as the last parameter and that looks much cleaner okay so let's go to unity and test if the collisions are working so let me open up the gameplay scene and before we test we have to assign the water layer in the game layers script okay so let me assign it and let's go ahead and test now okay so you can see that we are not able to walk through the water by default all right so the collisions are working so next if we have a pokemon with the move surf then we should be able to surf through the water right so let's go ahead and implement that so this is going to be pretty similar to cutting trees using the hm so let me go to the gameplay folder and here i'll add a new script called surfable water okay let me just get rid of the default code all right so this is going to be a lot similar to the cuttable tree so first we have to implement the interactable interface since the player can interact with it all right so let me use the control dot shortcut and implement the interact function so again this function is going to be pretty similar to 
how we cut a tree using HM cut. So let me actually copy the code inside the interact function of the cuttable tree and I'll paste it here. Okay. So here the dialog should be something like the water is deep blue. All right. And here we should ask, should the Pokemon use surf instead of cut? And here also I'll change cut to surf. Okay. And the name of the move that we have to check is also going to be surf. So let me just change that. All right. And we can also change the name of this variable from Pokemon with cut to Pokemon with surf. So I'll use Control R R to rename the variable and I'll change it to Pokemon with surf. Okay. And finally, we have an error here. So this is because we have an imported link in the script. So let me use Control dot shortcut and let me import link. All right. So when the player interacts with the water, we'll check if he has a Pokemon with the move serve. If so, we'll ask him whether we should perform serve. And if he selects yes, then we'll show this dialog saying the Pokemon use serve. Okay. But unlike the cuttable tree, we don't have to destroy the game object after we perform the move. So let me just get rid of this line. Okay. So here, what we should do instead is we should actually put the player in the water and we should let him surf, right? So first we have to make the player jump into the water. So for that, we just have to move the player one tile in the direction in which he's facing right now, right? He'll be facing the water. So we just have to move him one tile in that direction. So we can actually get the direction of the player from the character animator script. So here we have move X and move Y, which we can also use to get the direction the player is facing. Okay. So from here, we need to get the animator. So I'll call initiator dot get component and I'll get the character animator component. Okay. So let me show this in a variable called animator. So from this, we can get the direction the player is facing. So I'll store that into a vector called DIR, which is short for direction. Okay. So let me create a vector three. And here the X will be animator dot move X. And the Y will be animator dot move Y. Okay. And then the target position to which we have to make the player jump will be the current position of the player plus the direction, right? That will move the player one tile in the direction in which he's currently facing. So to the current position of the player, I'll add the direction. Okay. So this will give us the target position. So now we can make the player jump towards the target position. So for that, I'll use initiator dot do jump function from do twin. So to use this function, we have to import the do twin namespace. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So we have to make the player jump to the target position. And next for the jump power, I'll set a value like 0.3. And the number of jumps will be one because you only want the player to jump once. And the duration will be something like half a second. So we also want this function to wait. So I'll call dot wait for completion. And I'll add a yield return at the start. All right, so now the player should jump to the water when he interacts with it. But there is a problem. Right now when we are checking for interactable objects, we are only checking for objects in the interactable layer, right? But our water is not in the interactable layer, it's in the water layer. So if you go to the player controller script, here in the interact function, as you can see that we are only checking for the interactable layer. So here we also have to add the water layer. 
okay so let me go ahead and add that so now let's go to unit d and test if we can interact with the water so first we need to attach the script into our water tile map so let me go ahead and do that okay and now let's go to the gameplay scene and test all right so yeah now we are able to interact with the water but we don't have any pokemon with the move serve so let me go ahead and create that okay so in the game folder inside resources and moves first i'll add a new move called surf so we can actually just duplicate the cut move and rename it to surf all right i also change its name over here the type of surf will be water and it will be a special move all right so next let's give this move to a pokemon so right now we don't have any water type pokemons so let me just duplicate this bulbasaur and create a squirtle okay so let me also change its name over here and then i'll change its sprite all right i'll just choose the sprite of a squirtle let me also change the back sprite so next i'll change its sprite to water and type 2 can be none so i'm not going to change all the stats now because it's going to take time you can go ahead and change it if you want all right so next in the learnable moves i'll replace vine whip by surf just so that we can easily test the surfing mechanic okay and we can also replace it over here so next let me add squirtle to the player's party all right and i'll change its level to seven because that's the level in which it learns surf okay so now let's go ahead and test all right so now it should also ask us if the squirtle should use surf and if you press yes then the player should jump into the water okay so that's working but we can't move once we are in the water right so that's because the water tiles has collisions right so we won't be able to move when we are inside the water so how can we fix that so right now when we're checking for collisions we are also checking for the water layer right and we should actually check that when the player is walking when the player is walking he should not be able to walk through the water right but when the player is surfing he should be able to move through the water and we should not check for collisions with the water layer right so first we need a way of knowing if the player is walking or surfing so i'll add a variable for that in the character animator so here i'll duplicate the is jumping property and create another one called is surfing okay and then once the player jumps into the water i'll set animator dot surfing to true all right and now when we check for collisions we should only check the water layer if the player is not surfing right so by default i'll only add these three layers i'll remove the water layer and if animator dot is surfing is false then we'll also add the water layer to the collisions layer okay so that should solve that issue so next when is surfing is true we should not play the normal walking animation right we need to play a different animation when we are surfing so in the character animator i'll duplicate this and i'll create a new list called surf sprites so this will be the sprites that we are going to use for surfing so let me go ahead and import those sprites so i'll import it into the graphics folder 
all right and let me apply all the pixel art settings so i'll change sprite mode to multiple pixel per unit to 16 filter mode to point of filter and compression to none just like we do for all our sprites okay so next we need to split this into four different sprites so each sprite is 32 by 32 pixels so we can slice by cell size and for the cell size we can pass 32 by 32 okay so now we have four different surf sprites so let me go ahead and hit apply so next we can attach these sprites into the surf sprites list of the character animator so let me just lock the inspector so that i can drag multiple sprites into it okay so now when we are surfing we have to use those sprites so from the update function we should only run the current logic if the player is not surfing right so i'll add a if condition here and i'll check if the player is not surfing okay so if that's the case then we'll play the normal walking animation so let me move this code into our if condition okay and otherwise we should show the surf sprites right so we have four different surf sprites for each direction so based on the direction the player is facing we have to show one of them so i'll just copy this if condition for checking the direction of the player so if move x is equal to one that means the player is facing right so in that case i'll set the sprite to the right surfing sprite okay so let's check the index of the right surfing sprite so it's the third one in the sprite sheet so the index will be two okay and next if move x is minus one that means the player is moving left so we have to show the left right which is the last one in the sprite sheet so index is three okay and then if move y is equal to one then we have to show the up sprite so that is index one in the sprite sheet all right and finally if the player is moving down then we should show the down sprite which is index zero in the sprite sheet all right so that is all we need to do so let's go to unity and test if it's working all right so if i try to serve as you can see that the player sprite changes as soon as we jump into the water right and we are showing different sprites based on the direction in which we are moving okay but one problem we'll have is if we try to move out of the water you can see that the player is still in the surfing state right the player is not switching back to the walking state so we have to handle that case also so if you're surfing and if you're trying to move out of the water then you should stop surfing and start walking right so from the move function from here i'll check if we are surfing all right and if the target position to which we are trying to move is not on the water then you should stop surfing right so i'll use a physics dot overlap circle to check if the target position is on water all right so the point will be the target position okay and i'll set the radius to something like 0.3 and finally for the layer i'll pass the water layer okay so if this returns null then it means the target position is not a water tile so in that case we can stop surfing by setting animator dot is surfing to 
false okay so let's go ahead and test this so let me go ahead and serve all right and now if i try to go back to the land you can see that we'll stop surfing and start walking again okay so yeah that's working fine so we have implemented surfing in this video so i'll stop the video here if you think this video is helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video